Yeah, that's awesome. I'm really excited about Fiber. We've been working on it for a little while now. I think the whole team's been working on it for about six months. Sebastian's been experimenting for a little bit longer, along with Jordan Walk, some early prototypes and things like that. But I really see Fiber as a new foundation for React. It's going to set us up for the next several years worth of improvements and innovation that are going to happen in React and in the React ecosystem. Now, the scheduling primitives and the new data structures and algorithms are exciting, but there's also a couple of other things that I think are exciting that are you know, probably not worth Sebastian talking about, so I'll come up and, and talk really briefly about those. One of them is this concept that we call error boundary. This is actually born out of our server-side infrastructure at Facebook. And the idea is that if part of your application fails, but it's in sort of an isolated place, we shouldn't have to take out the whole app. We should be able to fail in an isolated way and handle that failure gracefully. And so error boundary allows you to sort of put you know, a seam in your application around a certain component or a subtree, and it makes it so that you can handle that better than the default of just unmounting the whole tree. We've had this support in React for a little while now, but the support in Fiber is a lot better. It's comprehensive, and I'm really excited about this. Um, perhaps the, the feature that everybody has been really waiting for, though, as the number one requested feature of React since we released it, uh, is the ability to return multiple compon components from render. <laughs> You can <laughs> so this would have been really, really hard to implement in the old version of React, but we knew that we needed to get this into the next version of React, and so Fiber was sort of designed around the, the idea that we need to have this. So now you can return arrays and strings from render. You don't have to do that weird dance with like your table rows and all this other stuff anymore. It's going to be awesome. One other thing that I'm really excited about was you know, we've long had a problem of the approachability of the React core. We don't get as many contributions to the React core as we want to because it's really hard code base to follow along. There's years worth of you know, iteration and changes and things in there. And so when we set out to build Fiber, we wanted to make it significantly more approachable and easier to contribute to. One big thing we did here is the whole React core, all of Fiber, is all written in Flow now. So we can make changes to it with more confidence that we're not going to break the world. Uh, this has been working really well, apparently. Leland, another shout out for you. Uh, he tweeted the other day that the, uh, he's pleasantly surprised at how approachable the code base was. I can't believe someone actually said that about React. React has kind of been historically pretty crazy to try and contribute to. So this is awesome. Fiber's not quite ready yet, but uh, you can follow along at isfiberreadyyet.com if you want to uh, <laughs> you put some pressure on the team here, myself included. A couple boxes there won't be filled in for a little while, but again, we are running this on facebook.com. Uh, it's working pretty well. We're really excited about it. Uh, we're going to keep going. One last thing that we've worked on over the past year that I want to mention real quick that has sort of changed my life is Create React App. Uh, we've known for a very long time that we needed a really good CLI for React. You know, frameworks like Ember had a good CLI from the beginning, a great CLI. We haven't really had one for React, and now we finally do. Uh, for myself, you know, as a manager, I don't make enough time to write code anymore. Uh, and I certainly don't have a lot of time to configure development environments and you know, packaging configurations and all these things. Uh, and so Create React App has enabled me to start coding again, which, you know, for better or worse, I don't know if the team's excited about it, but I am. <laughs> so I think this is as good a time as any to pour one out for JavaScript fatigue. Uh, <laughs> you weren't with us long, but we're, we're glad you're gone. <laughs> Uh, OK, finally, just a couple of quick thank yous. You know, I've been involved in planning of this conference for the past couple of years, but this year I gained a newfound appreciation for how much time and energy actually goes into uh, preparing for an event like this. And there's just a couple of people I really want to quickly thank. Uh, our events team, Christina and Mylene, uh, also Jenny and a bunch of other folks. FN Tech that put all of this stuff together, the stages and everything going on backstage. Absolutely amazing working with all of you. And then uh, Paula Shanis, who recently left the React team and joined the open source team at Facebook, uh, was also, you know, ran the whole scholarship program and put up the website and, and helped tremendously. And also Ben sat through a lot of dry runs with me, gave a lot of feedback. These folks are awesome. I also want to thank the folks that helped choose the talks. So actually what we did here is uh, we had over 300 submissions. Uh, for talks for the conference, and it was a lot of content to read through. So these folks actually helped us out. We gave them an anonymized list of talks, and they chose the ones that they were most excited about hearing about for a number based on a number of criteria. One thing we were looking for was a, lot, a good balance between sort of practical talks that you can take something away today and go implement it in your apps tomorrow, and then also innovative and exciting talks. So we struck a really good balance there. Um, and the speakers, I have to thank the speakers. Some of you have traveled from all over the world, I know as far as Mumbai, you know, Paris, 
And it's awesome to have such an, such an amazing set of talks and content lined up for you guys. Um, one big point I want to make is, you know, last year we got some feedback that the conference overall was a little bit heavily weighted towards the React Native side. So we tried to strike a better balance this year between React and React Native. Uh, but I want to make a, an important point about this. I really don't want to see this community become bifurcated along platform boundaries. One of the best things about React is that it enables us to break down those silos. And, and learn from each other no matter what platform we're building for, whether it's iOS, Android, web, or VR. And so I really want to make sure that we stay as one React community. Of course, there's going to be React native conferences and React web and React VR conferences and meetups and things like that. But I want to make sure we don't lose sight of what makes this community so strong and so powerful. So thank you for that. <laughs> thank you.